Hello, it's Wednesday, and I'm going to jump straight into this. So for those that watched last week's uh, work in progress video, I lamented ah, that the uh, Games Workshop Glazers were being discontinued. Lots of people questioned whether or not they were being discontinued. They are. They have been. They're now no longer available. You cannot buy them anywhere. Um, Games Workshop even sent an email to Element Games, who had my order for some more of them, saying that they will not be making them in the future, and to stop ordering them, please. Um, and near as I can tell from looking at the contrast range and the new air range, there are no actual one-for-one -one replacements to these colours. Fortunately, somebody on YouTube, and I'll link the video there, and also down in the description, the original video, has been doing the hard work to find recipes to colour match these using the old Vallejo, Vallejo Game Colour inks. Um, and I didn't have any yellow at the time, but now I do. I've actually got three bottles of this. I've got three bottles of this and three bottles of each of the other colours as well now. I just bought them. So we're going to do some science and repeat his experiment to see if, indeed, his recipes do colour match to the Games Workshop glazes. So I'm going to start off with the easiest one of the bunch, which was Lamenta's Yellow, which I've got. Uh, screenshot here, which is uh, one part ink to two parts water. Pretty easy. So I'm going to start off just with Lamenta's Yellow straight out the pot. Get myself a brush. That'll do. And lay down a nice stripe here. So I'll do a zoom in on all of these at the end so that you can see the comparisons. So that's how Games Workshop Lamenta's yellow. So, according to his video, one part ink, two parts water. So there's one drop of ink. This is just water. Um, it's not distilled water for this test, it's just regular tap water. But in the UK, my tap water is pretty clean. So, come on, drippy drip. The nozzle had a bit of plastic in the end because I hadn't used it before. <laughs> um, so yeah, one part ink and one, two drops of water. Now this isn't necessarily going to be exactly the same in terms of transparency, but we'll see. So. Yeah, that's pretty close. If I'm honest, that's pretty much an exact colour match. In terms of hue, it's right there. It's definitely the same. Um, in terms of transparency and coverage, the Games Workshop one seems a little bit better, but that might be the presence of a little bit of extra medium rather than just water. But I'm not going to worry about that because I think for my purposes... That's perfectly fine. So, yeah, I don't want to add any extra medium to it, if I can avoid it. So Lamenta's yellow, the colour match is pretty much there. It does sit slightly differently, but this is on paper, and I think on the model it's not going to matter. <clears throat> so next up, we have um, Waywatcher Green, which is three parts green ink to two parts yellow ink to ten parts water. All these recipes will be in the description below and also on the original video. So first off, Waywatcher Green. It's very translucent. Probably explains the extra water. So the recipe is three parts green, two parts yellow, 10 parts water. So one, two, one, two. So this is essentially a two to one ratio between ink and water. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
Right. So give this a little mixy mix. Okay, and I would say this is a little bit yellower, but that's fine for my purposes. Um, yeah, I'd say this is actually a little bit yellower than my patch of Waywatcher Green. Um, batches will vary. And again, it's a little more opaque and sitting slightly differently, which again, could be the relationship between pigment and medium in the inks. But yeah, it's, it's close enough that you wouldn't be able to tell in an army. So we're two for two so far, that's pretty good. We're gonna do Bloodletter next. So, some blood letter, straight out the pot. Blood letter's nice and bright. And the ratio for blood letter was four parts red to one part yellow. And again, 10 drops of ink. So, one, two, three, four. Now, blood letter, letter was quite close to red ink in the first place, it was just slightly more orangey. So adding the yellow ink should fix that up. And you can scale these recipes up so that they are, you can make a big bottle of these up, that's just what I plan to do. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, I think. Lost count slightly there. But I'm not interested in the hue, not so much the transparency. Yeah, that's pretty close. I'd actually say the blood letter here is slightly more yellow than I've got it. But again, it's so close you won't be able to tell the difference on an army. Unlike straight out of the bottle where it was really, really quite different and noticeably different. So we're three for three. Now the last one is uh, Gullum and Blue, which the original video claimed was an absolute mare to reproduce. So, it just looks blue to me. Um, and I'm just gonna do a quick comparison against the original um, with two drops of water, just as a, just as a control. So, yeah, my blue ink is a lot uh, less purple than golden blue. So the recipe of adding red to it makes sense. I wasn't sure because I couldn't remember exactly what my blue ink turned out like. And the ratio we have from the video is six parts blue to one part red, and then 28 parts water, which is a lot of water. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. One part red. And because that's, uh, what, seven parts ink, so you want at least 14 parts water. Fourteen. So that's 14 we're at. <clears throat> and we're going to see how that performs. So this should shift it slightly towards... I don't think I need to add more water than this, but it has changed the hue to match. So I think 28 parts water is too much um, compared to my batch of Gollum and Blue, which I think might have been darker than the one in the original video. But that is definitely a much better hue match than before. I mean, I 
It's not exactly right, but I think it's close enough. So, these color recipes, they're pretty close. You can, I can see on the camera screen that the difference between this and this is quite there. This may need a little bit more water, but in terms of the hue, it's really close. This is, actually looks a little bit too purple, so maybe seven parts blue to one part red. Um, might get you closer, but that red ink is quite strong and does a lot of work very quickly. But these three here are definitely matches. So lament is yellow. Just get yourself some yellow ink and water it down. That's dead simple. And a heck of a lot cheaper than the old Games Workshop blazes. One bottle of this, I think, is uh, 17 mil. I think, yeah, 17 milliliters, or half a fluid ounce, just over, for the Americans out there. One bottle of this is 12 milliliters, and they cost slightly more for the Games Workshop one, I think. Um, and essentially, since you're tripling, no, you're adding three times the volume of this water to it in order to make it, you're essentially getting four times 17 milliliters, which is uh, some maths, and uh, I can't do it in my head. So four times 70, 68 milliliters, which is um, almost six times as much for this for slightly less money than this. So this was a ripoff all along. Par for the course, really, for Games Workshop, some paints. They like nothing more than thinning something down that you can get cheaper elsewhere and then charging you more for it. If anyone wants to know why I'm salty about Games Workshop's paint range, it's that. Their entire business model is take something that someone else makes, thin it down, sell it at a, pro at a uh, premium, and you can make that money because people who are buying their product do not know the other thing exists. That's why, you know, this is contrast medium. Get yourself a 250ml bottle for eight quid rather than four pounds for, seven t for 24 milliliters of the stuff. <laughs> you do the maths. Yeah, this, this, this works out a lot cheaper. And this is, not, you know, it's for artists, so they use a lot of it. But us hobbyists, we don't use much. It's what's known as the hobby tax. It's horrible, and don't, it's not just Games Workshop that does it. Pretty much all the hobby companies do it, and they take advantage of you. So just be, just be smart. Shop smart. When you find something that, you know, a hobby company is selling you, do some research, find out what's in it. Odds are you can get it cheaper and in larger volumes elsewhere, because all they're really doing is taking something someone else made and thinning it down and selling it back to you for a premium. Um, I'm pretty sure that this ink is nothing special, it's just waterproof acrylic ink, and you can probably get this in larger volumes. But to be honest, for my purposes, this is all I need. So one last thing I'm gonna check, and this is for anyone that does night haunts following my night haunt recipe, um, and that is Ghosty Woo Glaze, which is a one-to-one -one mix of Waywatcher Green and Gulliman Blue. So I've got my mixes here of those two colors, so I'm gonna get a brush load of Gulliman Blue, my fake Gulliman Blue, a brush load of Waywatcher Green. I'm gonna mix them together. It's looking promising and it's not quite as blue as I was expecting. And a bit more, one and a half to one then. And now it's just really super blue. So yeah, there it is. I still had some blue in the bristles of the brush. So yeah, I'm happy with that. Unfortunately, I have run out of my ghosty woo blue, which is why I needed to make these glazes to finish my army. Well, a one-to-one -one mix of these two recipes works perfectly for creating that, and I'm gonna be making a bottle of that so I can finish off my night haunts. So, thanks to, I need to look up the name of the person that made the original video because I'm terrible at remembering names. Yes, thanks to Juan Hidalgo Miniatures for doing the legwork on this. I can confirm his recipes are near as damn it the same. Um, Gulliman Blue, slightly off, but he admits that in his own comments section that he's still working on that recipe. I think it needs to shift slightly more towards the blue than the than uh, the red. 
So seven or eight parts blue to one part red, I think would work much closer. And I don't think you need as much water in it as he suggests, um, but your mileage may vary depending upon your batch of golden blue and you're trying to match, and if you're trying to match it or not. But my coverage has turned out actually pretty similar with half as much water as he suggested in his video. So there we have it. For making your own glazes, get yourself some game inks, some water. Uh, the yellow one is the most important one because all of the Games Workshop inks seem to be shifted slightly yellower compared to the uh, primary colours, um, which explains why Lamenta's yellow was always did such hard work in making everything seem more saturated because pretty much all of the Games Workshop primary colours shift slightly towards yellow, which makes a lot of sense if you think about it. Um, so yeah, on with the rest of the vlog. So if you're only interested in this bit, you can leave. If you want to know what I've been painting this week, then you can, you know, now's, now's your chance. Or, you know, the other experiments I've been doing. So first up, a blue horror from the eyes of the nine. Now, if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, you'll have seen this guy. His base is finished now. Didn't it uh, knock that out last night? Um, he broke a little bit in the process of painting the base, which uh, I've now fixed. And you probably can't tell. Hopefully you can't tell. So you can see he's purple on the underneath and he's got some OSL from the flames on top of his head there. So part one of this is going to be coming to Patreon uh, this week at some point. Um, I was going to go and edit the video uh, today or tomorrow, probably tomorrow. And that should be up for patrons soon, hopefully within 48 hours of this video going live. Um, which will mean that How to Thin Paints for Airbrush will be coming to YouTube soon. Because I'm basically doing a sta staggered thing when a new video goes live on Patreon. The old video that's on Pat that's Patreon exclusive comes to YouTube. So I did this guy. I have also, in the same video, got the Brimstone Horrors. Because the flames on the... Uh, Blue Horror here and the Brimstone Horrors were painted in exactly the same way. Uh, I used an airbrush for those plus inks. So this is uh, kind of the... I, I do indeed use the Games Workshop inks, but I mostly use Lamenta's Yellow, which as we now know can be replaced just by Yellow Ink. Um, so this is mostly going to be covering doing some weird skin tones with an airbrush. Lots of airbrush blending. Because... Uh, I just didn't want to have to try and brush blend these by hand. It would have taken me a really long time and I wasn't up for that. But also using a lot of inks because a lot of inks went into this as well as washes. Um, in terms of the fire effects. The skin was mostly just airbrushed and then highlighted with a paintbrush. Um, so we're going to be covering OSL and some airbrushing. And also the bases are going to be in this video, so you can see I've done one, this guy, as the test, and I'm doing this one on camera to come in the part of the video, so I still need to paint this, which is why I'm not going to be doing the editing till tomorrow. So yeah, finish these guys off, dead chuffed with the blue horror. I've also got on the paint table the acolytes, who I'm going to be painting for the next part and they will probably take just as long as the horrors to paint but they're mostly skin and some white cloth and then the shields and i'm going to do a wet blended transition on the shields so you get to see how i do that and the skin i'm not 100 percent certain on how i'm going to do the skin i mean to be honest if you really want to knock these guys out quick just use the old gullum and flesh contrast paint that's coming out on the skin, I think it would do a perfectly stand-up job. It's one of the few that I've looked at and gone, yeah, that seems like a good way to just knock out a bunch of flesh. But I am personally think I'm going to be doing some wet blending the flesh on these guys because I want to practice that. Um, and I'm not going to be using the airbrush on these guys pretty much at all, I think. 
Um, no, not at all, I don't think, apart from maybe on the bases, just to speed them up. But since I've already done the bases for the other video, that's just, so, you know, it's going to be done exactly the same way. So they're going to be coming soon. Um, I've done some more work on my Glaive Wraith Stalkers. Let's zoom out a bit for that. So, painted the skin. Got some speckly paint everywhere on them. Need to touch that up. Uh, painted the shaft of the weapons, painted the blades of the weapons. The skin is just demonet hide, washed with Druidy Violet at the moment. It's the first two steps of painting the skin in the Chain Rasps video. The weapons are basically done for these guys. This was just Storm Vermin fur, then dry washed with grey, and then washed with the Thurian camera shade. It was, it was dead easy. Um, not, uh, knocked all of the hafts out on nine of these guys in about 20 minutes to this standard. So they're looking pretty good. And then I did all of the weapon blades up over about 45 minutes on all all nine of these guys. So, yeah. It's, painting models isn't slow. Don't know, what, don't know why people say that. It's like why people say that it is. You know, you're doing a full unit of 10, it's going to take you a while no matter what. But, I still need to highlight all of the skin, um, which I've been putting off because I've had other things to do. But it's not going to take long because most of them have just got like one hand visible and then an outstretched arm because they're all, you know, holding the weapon, you know, it's not even very much arm on most of them. And then at the end, I was, you know, probably painting the bases will take longer than painting the rest of them for the uh, sculpted bases. And painting this drum, and I've already done this, the drum skin, but uh, painting the rest of the drum's going to take a while. So, oh, I also need to do the spines. I keep forgetting to do the spines. But I don't always have the, the right colour out to do them. Um, so I've been working on those, you know, slowly plodding my way through my life on army. And I've been experimenting on this Stormcast Eternal. And it may look fine if you're watching this on a phone, but trust me, this is kind of grainy. I dry brushed this cloak using a new dry brush that I'm experimenting with. Um, you can, you should be able to tell down here that it's got quite a lot of texture to it that's not necessarily desirable, but I was seeing what you could do with dry brushing on these cloaks, because these cloaks are pain in the arse to paint, basically. Um, I also dry brushed the armour with some Screamer Pink and that came out really bad looking. Was not happy with how that came out looking. But this, not too, not too uh, much of a problem with this. However, I spent so long messing about with the dry brush in this, you know, getting the paint on, wiping it off dry brushing, building up lots of gradual layers of slightly lighter colour paint because that's how you get smooth blends with dry brushing, that it took about the same amount of time, I think, as if I'd just glazed paint over black. Um, so it wasn't really a time saver. And this is one of the things that I've always found, like, once you take things like washing and dry brushing, and probably even contrast paints, um, to the point where they're going to start looking good and smooth and not look, you know, not have any of the downsides of those techniques. They take just as long as a simpler technique or rather a technique that is kind of more basic and been around for a lot longer. And probably more time than, you know, just layering it up um, with the different colors on a paintbrush or definitely more time than wet blending. If you want to paint fast, you learn to wet blend. Like dry brushing is low skill, like it's got a, to, to use a gaming analogy, dry brushing and contrast paints and washes, for example, they've got a high skill floor, so anyone can start using them and get decent results, but they've got a low skill ceiling. Um, and especially once you start hitting that skill ceiling, it becomes just as time consuming to use those techniques as any other technique. So if you're using them for speed painting purposes, they're not better. Um, but at the low end, like where you're just kind of knocking models out and using them specifically for their speed and not worried about their quality, then they're, you know, they work, they work really well. But yeah, this is one of those occasions where dry brushing took me just as long as if I was glazing it. 
I guess I didn't have to concentrate as hard while doing it, so there's that. But uh, yeah, it, it didn't really save me any time. But I have found like my new favorite dry brush, and I'm gonna show you to it. Show you it here. Here it is. This is my new favorite dry brush. It's relatively big. It's got a rounded tip. You can see there, it's completely round and circular. It's very soft, and it goes and it goes kind of to a point, which makes it good for stippling as well. And this is a Chic Pro smudger, two pounds from the range. Um, some of the bristles have been coming out. You know, it's only two pounds. But I thought those new Artist Opus uh, dry brush brushes that they run the Kickstarter for, that I uh, pledged for. I'm going to be getting my set of those in October. Um, you know, they're 49 quid, and they basically look like makeup brushes. Um, which got me thinking, like, are makeup brushes any good for dry brushing? The answer is yes. Yes, they are. Uh, you, you know, these small ones, this one works really, really well. I did all of this dry brushing with it. I tested it out on a few other models, which I don't currently have to hand. Um, but it works really well. But what it doesn't do is because of the small size and because of the rounded tip, it doesn't really just pick up the top edges. It actually kind of picks up the entire surface. If you only want to pick out the top edges, then you need flat, like this, because it goes over the top edge in one pass and then springs down. Whereas this, as it goes over the edge, just kind of floofs over everything underneath it as well. So this is actually really good for, say, picking up detail, picking up raised surfaces or base coating raised surfaces while leaving things in the recesses still uh, the colour underneath. So, again, I don't have one to hand. Um, actually, what I can demonstrate, I could show you what I mean on this. So if you're base coating this base and you'd already painted all of the gaps with a colour, this would be able to just do a base coat over the top of all of that with another colour without it actually going in to the gaps as long as your paint is relatively thick and it goes on really smooth. This was the really surprising thing about this was just how smooth the paint was and I guess that's again it's a makeup brush it's called a smudger it's supposed to create a smooth blend um, in a small space and it works really well for this. Again, two pounds from the range, if you have the range near you. Um, anything that's probably just a you know, cheap makeup brush that's about this size would work, but I recommend experimenting because there's a lot more expensive brushes out there. I mean, I got some other brushes as well. So I got myself a graduate oval wash half brush, which I think stands for half inch, basically. Um, as you can see, big and soft, and I was planning on testing this out on bigger things like vehicles and bases and dioramas and you know, display bases, things like that, just for doing larger areas with dry brushing because it's big, it's soft, it's round, and this was £2.50. Dead cheap, it's a synthetic brush, you don't need anything more fancy really. So I'm going to be interested in comparing these to the brushes I get from my Artist Opus Kickstarter, because you know, two pounds fifty versus what is it? It's about a tenner a brush, really, in the Kickstarter. I mean, I'm sure the big one costs more to make than the small one, but uh, again, like I said, hobby companies—they're out there to make money, and they usually do that by taking something that already exists, rebranding it, and selling it to you for a premium with the word "hobby" attached. Be wary of the hobby tax. We don't like it. So, uh, yeah, giving these a try. <clears throat> and that's what I've been up to this week. That and, pr you know, priming a load of demonets for my partner's army. Because we're back on the Age of Sigmar wagon and we want to play games now that the Head of Knights of Slanesh book is out. And the Keep of Secrets looks lovely, and so does all of the models in it, to be honest. And I've basically abandoned Stormcast Eternals because I can't be bothered painting them in favour of Nighthawks. So that's it. Get yourself some of this. Uh, there'll be a link in the description. And I'll add, also probably be adding it to the Amazon uh, 
affiliate store as well. Um, but be warned, I bought the last of Element Games' stock, so they'll be, you know, restocking this for a week or something. I, I, cl I cleaned them out of yellow, yellow ink, so you'll be waiting a little bit. Um, but, uh, yeah. Thanks to Juan Hidalgo for the recipes. These three are pretty much perfect matches. <clears throat> and, yeah, good luck with getting the Gullum Blue. Spot on. I'll report on that when it happens. Again, link to his video in the description. And check him out. And give his channel a subscribe as well. He looks like he does good stuff. So there we go. Thanks for watching. Bit of a long one, I think. I'll try and edit it down. Um, hello to everyone who's new. Channel's grown quite a bit recently. And uh, yeah, keep an, all Patreons, keep an eye on the Patreon feed. There will be the old uh, How to Paint horrors and osl and you know flame effects coming up very shortly for all of you and everybody else look forward to how to thin paints for airbrush that'll be coming out soon so bye bye